in some ways, I think it's quite disappointing seeing these bars because the gold is an exciting element. It has interesting chemistry and it's just sitting here doing nothing. It's enormously impressive, but it's a bit sad, rather like a mausoleum where the, the dead gold is sitting waiting for people to remember it. Could be doing exciting reactions and so on. We're in the vault, the bullion vault of the Bank of England. I've never seen so much gold. In fact, I've never seen so much of any element. So we're standing here, and each shelf here has got a ton of gold, which is worth 35 million pounds at today's price. Tomorrow it might be worth even more. It's very secure. We've been through a whole series of security checks. No money is allowed here to make sure we don't take anything out. And so we're both really excited to be here. So the camera may be shaking with Brady's excitement. I've never seen large lumps of gold, and to see it all round is extraordinary. One's first reaction is that it can't possibly be real, because normally you don't see such things. Looks like chocolates in the duty-free at the airport or something like that. But these really are solid gold bars, and it's quite extraordinary. There isn't any smell because metals don't smell and it's very quiet because of the thick walls and to keep it secure. The weather's been very cold recently and I was ready to be shivering but it's nice and warm. But I suppose gold colour also gives you a feeling of warmth so it may be partly psychological. The reason why the bank has got this store is because not only the Bank of England but other central banks like to keep some of their money reserves in gold because the price of gold is very stable or the value of gold compared to the value of currencies which can go up and down and so every country has a certain proportion of its reserves in gold and if you look at the statistics the UK at the moment has about 310 tons of gold in its reserves but there's much more gold here than that because it belongs to all sorts of people, not just to the Bank of England. This vault is part of a complex of different rooms. I haven't seen the other rooms. But all together, if you look at the bank's annual report, it's worth £197 billion. That is 197,000 million pounds. And that's quite a serious sum of money. The people buy and sell the gold, and each block of gold has its own number, like your car has a registration number, and when people buy and, and trade the gold, they don't actually take the bar home, but just that number is transferred from the seller's account to the buyer's account, and the gold just sits here quietly. Apparently the oldest bar of gold here has been here since 1916, that's the First World War, nearly a hundred years ago. But the beauty of gold as a chemical element is that it's very unreactive. So it looks just the same now as it did in 1916. It hasn't tarnished, it hasn't got oxide layers on the surface, it hasn't started creeping, changing its shape and so on. So come over here because they've given me two bars that we can look at. So we've got two different bars of gold which are both the so-called London Good Delivery Bars, which means that their weight is in a certain limit range. And in fact, each of them has its precise weight put on them in a rather strange unit called a troy ounce. So this one is 399.100. This one was made in Australia. And this one apparently came from Switzerland and is slightly heavier, 400.075. I must say, this one looks much nicer. It's polished more, and this one looks a bit like a loaf of bread, but it's rather a miserable loaf of bread, but a pretty fantastic lump of gold. Now, one of the things you know about gold is that it's really heavy, so I'm going to see whether I can actually lift this with one hand. And I can sort of lift it, but not easily. Two Don't hands is quite easy. So. This weighs, each of these in more understandable units, weighs something like 12.4 kilos or 28 pounds. 
So for those of you who use imperial units, that's two stone. Each of these is worth about £435,000. You could buy two quite nice houses for a block like this, or for a whole shelf of these, which contains a ton, you could buy 137 of the upmarket Rolls-Royce cars. So take your choice. These blocks are a bit like bricks. And if you took all the gold that had ever been mined and put them together like a construction kit to make a big block, you would end up with a block that was 20 meters cubed. That's 60 feet on each side, which would easily fit, for example, under the legs of the Eiffel Tower. It wouldn't look all that big just as a building on a street. And that's all the gold there ever has been. I did a little calculation on the way here that I weigh about the same as six of these bars of gold, which means that if I were worth my weight in gold, I'd be worth a bit over two and a half million pounds. I was a bit disappointed, thought I might be worth more, but still. So not only would all the gold ever mined fit here under the legs of the Eiffel Tower, it'd fit here quite easily. By my reckoning, that cube of about 20 metres in each direction would probably fit three times from there to over there. Same for each side. And you could probably stack it on top a few times as well. So not that much gold. Now we actually filmed a bit more on the vault we haven't used, so stay tuned, we might use that soon. In the meantime, we've made plenty of other films about gold, we've evaporated it, we've dissolved it. You can check them out also.